Welcome to TransLogic. I'm Jonathan Buckley. In 2013, the DARPA Robotics Challenge was initiated to get teams from all over the world to build robots that could help out in a disaster scenario. Flash forward to today, and we're here at the finals with millions of dollars up for grabs. So let's forget about the robot apocalypse for just a second and focus on how it is that robots could actually help the human race. How excited are you being here today? This place that you see in this hangar, this is a special place. All around the world, all the cutting edge technology, not only the technology, but the people, the brains behind it, they are all here. In the future, any breakthrough in robotics technology will be done by somebody in this very room. So it's very, very exciting here. So tell us, DARPA, it's a bit of a mouthful. What's the definition of DARPA? So DARPA is a government organization. It's the research wing of the Department of Defense. So yeah. if you think about all the crazy technology like uh, stealth, even the internet or the GPS, all of this came from DARPA projects. Well, tell us a little bit about the challenge because obviously yeah. it started in 2013. It was designed by DARPA to help people come together and build robots that would help out in disaster scenarios. Two and a half years ago in Japan, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident. A lot of yeah. people died. It was a it was a really disaster, and it's a really sad situation. Experts say that in the first 24 hours, if somebody could have just opened one valve, we could have prevented everything. But because wow. of the radiation, people cannot go. So what do you do? We develop robots to do that. So we're really developing technology to save lives. So the robot needs to drive a car, open a door, go through the door, close a valve, use a power tool to cut a hole out of a wall, some surprise task, walk over rubble. Okay. All crazy things. There's $2 million on the line, prize money for first place, yep. $1 million for second, and yep. $500,000 for third. However, if you talk to people, nobody's really doing it for the money. Yep. So this is different from a regular sporting competition. So it's not really competing against each other. It's challenging the big problem of developing technology. I'm here with Doug Steven, a researcher at IHMC Robotics. You guys have been competing pretty strongly over the last couple of days, haven't you? But you had a little bit of a fall. We did, yeah. We fell twice yesterday. Bummer. Uh, <laughs> but the robot seems to be a one piece. That's good. We're shaking it out. No permanent damage. Hopefully we put up a better run today than we did yesterday. Why go with the Atlas? It seems like a popular choice here at the Robotics Challenge. The Atlas robot was actually awarded to teams who competed in a virtual challenge for teams that only wanted to focus on software. We were one of those teams. And the top contenders in that virtual challenge all received Atlas as a prize to continue competing in the competition. Wow. It's about six foot two, so it's kind of like a tall human. It's pretty top heavy. It looks like it skipped leg day. Yeah, yeah. Atlas is about, <laughs> uh, it's about 380, 390 pounds. It's a really yeah. big robot. And it's gone through some recent upgrades, hasn't it? It has. The original version of Atlas had all the, you know, huge cooling system and power distribution and all that stuff. It was in a big box off board the robot with a big long cable that ran to it. Yeah. Um, of course, that's not allowed at the finals, so we had to take the robot sent it back to Boston Dynamics, and they've made the whole thing self-contained. All the hydraulics, all the cooling, all the computers, everything is on board the robot. I have to ask, what approximately does it cost to get a robot off the ground? In terms of the money, it's a little bit difficult to say. I can talk about the material cost, but it really, yeah. there's a lot, much more money goes into it. The labor cost, the time and effort that we put in. Of course, student labor free. I was gonna say, <laughs> that helps a little bit. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so it's difficult to really put a cost on the robot itself, but these robots in the future will save people's life. Literally, it's priceless. When it comes to software, which is what you guys specialize in, is there one particular style of software or do you just develop it from the ground up? For us, we develop it from the ground up. Uh, there is a sort of like a out of the box way of controlling the Atlas robot. We chose to go our own way and the robot does afford you the opportunity to ground up, rework the entire software stack and that's what we've done. Yeah. There are things we take for granted because we don't really think about them when we do them. We just, yeah. they're, it's kind of automatic, you know? And so it's trying to figure out how to describe those processes. How do you not fall down when you're walking? How do you not fall down if you push your hand against a wall? We did not know exactly what the tasks were gonna look like when we got here. We had a vague idea, so we'd build five or six different versions of every task with little variations here or there so we could try and be robust to whatever happened. I mean, I think it served us pretty well. Today for the challenge, how are you controlling thought? Uh, we have a laptop on a big touch screen. Yeah. Uh, uh, so we call this supervised autonomy. Now, it's not purely teleoperated because we cannot do that in the real situation and even this competition because the communication link between the robot and the, and the operator 
uh, it's messed up. DARPA is actually intentionally messing up with the communication. So supervised autonomy means that we give higher level commands. Robot, open that door. And the robot needs to figure out the details how to do that. Well, we're on the final day of competition yes. today. This is where it all goes down. There's been some competitions yesterday as yes. well. Uh, how did Thor perform? The Thor, it drove the car perfectly. Uh, it opened the door, went through the door, walked up to the valve, closed the valve, walked to the drill. And when it picked up the drill, something went wrong with the lower body and the robot fell. And instead of standing up, it actually broke. So we had to stop the competition over there. So the students been working here all night. They fixed the robot, and I think it's ready to go. So we'll see how it goes. Moving our attention now to Team Thor. <laughs> so Team Thor officially earning that point. We're here, just have to turn the valve 360 degrees. Oh, you had a good drive. Thank you, we had a good run. Good drive down the track in the Polaris. Yes. And then got to the door. No problem there. No problem, but then once you got inside, a little bit of a stumble. What I think it is, because we always practice indoors. Here it's outdoors. Beautiful weather, California sunshine heats up certain parts. Ah. So I think, I speculate as a heating that might issue. Be. Electromechanical stuff does not like heat. You can't always win, but you can always learn. And what have you got to say to the people that think that robots will take over the world? <laughs> You've seen the robots? They're slow. <laughs> they fall down. We have a long, long, long way to go. So I tell you, you don't have to worry, at least yet. What's your anticipation for the result this afternoon? We're hoping we don't fall again, yep. uh, as long as we didn't do too much damage to the robot yesterday. So it'd be nice to get one more point up on the board. That's our goal. IHMC Robotics, the running man Atlas robot, yesterday destroyed the competition in those first few rounds. In fact, it earned seven points. The only thing it didn't do was climb the stairs. Ran out of time. We'll see if the team HIMC Robotics takes a more aggressive approach and tries to get to the stairs a little bit faster, earn eight points. I guess a congratulations is in order. Thank you very that much. That was spectacular. Yeah, it was uh, it was crazy, man. I mean, we did uh, we did still have a bit of a dinged up robot, and we had to take it slow, but we yep. got eight points on the board, and we're eight points. We're happy yeah, that's about the that. maximum. That is the maximum number of points, and I think we're the first walking robot to get eight points on the board. So where does that put you in the rankings thus far? Right now we're in second place, but as I'm talking, wow. the top four robots from yesterday are running, so they could knock us out. The second place prize goes to the team IHMC Robotics. Well, way to go, team IHMC. I think that team has proven that we're entering a brand new era of robotics. I think most people here today will agree that that's pretty exciting. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.